Hello, good man. What? Can you tell me how long this work will last? I know your type. You're one of those who likes complaining to his superiors. Go bother someone else, loafer. I just wanted to chat. I don't even work here anymore. Then you're just wasting my time. <laughs> you ain't seen nothing yet. You know what? I don't think I'll ever be able to look at a blowtorch again without shuddering. That Ramos has forever tarnished the noble art of welding. Someone should really teach him a lesson. I hope it doesn't have to be me. I'll go enjoy this amazing sunny day on the seashore. I hope it's stormy. The idea was good, but placing the tube next to the magnet would not be enough to join the pieces together. Maybe if the magnet had a proper housing to insert the metal tube. The idea wasn't bad, but I couldn't pierce the magnet with the drill just holding it in my hand. It would only get me a pair of stigmata that way. Attaching the magnet to the metallic frame on the window, I would be able to operate it more easily. I suppose asking you to borrow the drill would be too bold. Eh, I'd let you take it, since it belongs to that inept fool on the street. But then he would go postal on me and I would never hear the end of it. But if you want to use it here, I'm fine with it. Go ahead and drain the battery completely. Yes, I perforated the magnet exactly in the center. I really like the idea. I could combine its magnetic potential with the tube's length and strength, resulting in a diabolical device. I realized, though, that the magnet pull would not be enough to keep the two pieces firmly joined together. I'd have to think of something else. That way, the two pieces wouldn't detach anymore. Asking the blacksmith was definitely worth a shot. Hey. What do you want? I need your incredible ability with the welder. You see this pole? I see it. And you can stick that right where the sun doesn't shine. If you really want to bother someone on the work site, try that drunkard near the newsstand. He really loves killing time with boars. Not that wasting time is really a problem with those horrible walls he raises up. Rude and mean. But I could sense some resentment towards the mason. Maybe I could exploit that to my advantage. Hello. The blacksmith was right. It looks perfect, but upon closer inspection, the flaws really stand out. Y you are talking about my newly stuccoed wall, are you? Hmm? Oh, not me. The blacksmith working on the upper floor. How could that jerk dare to criticize me? You know what I say in return? I'm all ears. That beard that he proudly parades around is dyed. Just a meager counterfeit. Oh, that's a low blow. Yes, and now it's high time all the world knows it, once and for all. There we are. I hope this will teach him to shut that big mouth. It's a real piece of art, in my humble opinion. You even helped to prove the neighborhood. I think the blacksmith would really like that little masterpiece.
The Masons writing had attracted a crowd down on the street. Lucky for them, because soon, an unforgettable show was about to start. Hello, good man. What? I think there's something you need to see as soon as possible. What are you talking about? Here you go. The atomic bomb. I really don't have the heart to tell you. You better look for yourself. It's down the street. The whole world fell silent. The birds stopped singing. Everything stood still. Holy mother! This beard is sacred! A Shaolin monk taught me to groom it while I was at a spiritual retreat. Since then, I've looked after it every day of my life, like a perfect bonsai. That writing on the ground says the exact opposite. This offense will be repaid in blood. So I was left with my last cigarette, the one for emergency only. Yeah, emergency. Yet I'd find myself lighting that same cigarette only a few hours later. Now that the blacksmith wasn't around anymore, I could use his welder. Now the magnet wouldn't fall off the tube so easily. With the tool I'd ingeniously fabricated, I would be certainly able to lift the manhole cover. You already found a new job, I see. Actually, I... What? Ah, oh, Get out of here, filthy rat! Look what you've done! You made Spubby run away, and now it will take me all day to find him again. Spubby? You mean you have a sewer rat for a pet? And you put a collar on him? Besides which, what are you doing in the sewers? I live in the sewers. Not exactly in this area, though. Now, I'm on the hunt for lost technology. Lost technology? People throw away lots of good stuff in the sewers. Radios, old phones, even TVs. I gather and collect everything. I bet you're one of them. You feel so superior, you guys from up there. Get over yourself, kid, or I'll take a swim and pull you by the ear. <laughs> I'd like to see that. I'm Lars. What's your name, young bully? I am M. M? Do you work for the MI6 or the Men in Black? I chose the name myself, okay? M. R. Well, M, I need to retrieve those keys over there. I can't say it was a pleasure to meet you. Not that I care, but careful of the current. There's an undertow in that spot. I'm more afraid of your rat, to tell the truth. I had a bad experience once, and I still haven't gotten over it. Keep it away from me, okay? I wasn't sure I could reach it by jumping. I could have tried, but... But it would have been risky. Very risky. Don't do it! Are you crazy? Ah, oh, she's screaming at me at such a precarious moment. I could fall in the water and drown. Or even worse, I, I could have gotten my coat dirty. The water current is too strong here. You really risk killing yourself if you jump. I agree. I know a good suggestion when I hear one. I thought again about the planks I saw on the HPD balcony, but I couldn't go around dragging boards with me. Besides, I didn't know how to drop one through the manhole. Too many problems. I'd have to think of another way.
Those planks seem solid despite the moisture. I use one to reach the key. The problem remained of how to reach them. Hey there, kid. What do you want? Tell me more about your childhood, thug. I don't tell my business to the first surfacer that comes down here. Do you mean superficial? No, I meant surfacer. That is, a surface inhabitant. Come on, open up a bit and share. What a pain in the neck. When we were babies, my parents let me and my three brothers drop down a gutter. Then the rat you saw initiated us in the ninja arts. Since then, we've protected this filthy city. Let me guess. M stands for Michelangelo, right? Exactly. Listen, rascal. I need a little contribution in terms of physical effort. Take this metal tube and use it to pull down one of those boards. This is child labor. But I intend to reward you properly. Then it's moonlighting. Come on. Do you want a deal or not? It depends. What are you offering? Well, I don't know. Wouldn't money alone be enough? To use it, I'd have to leave the sewers. And I really don't want that. Find something that I might like, and we'll talk about it. Little opportunist. About our deal. What do you think of a nearly brand new original pony remote control? Wow! It's one of those you can control any pony device on the market with! I haven't seen one of those in years. Give me that tube. I'll take care of it. Good job, young scoundrel. Now give me the tube back. Come on. No way! If I trade it to the junk dealer, I'll earn enough to buy a nice stuffed sandwich. A universal pony remote control and a wonderful iron tube in exchange for a nearly rotten board. I got screwed over by a mutant youngster living in the sewers. On the other hand... Green Dart, I'm coming to the rescue. Canned beans. Well, seriously, I go crazy for them. A rusty cage. I hope they didn't use it to dump an alligator into the sewers. Thanks to a still hand and focus vision, I was finally back in possession of my vehicle. Now, I could freely explore Miami high and low. seemed like a vending machine for chewing gum, but actually it contained soft marshmallows. That bad guy's face was haunting me. No trace of the events I would always remember as the night of the challenge. I never liked staining walls. The mannequin had been replaced with those sacks overnight. If one day I had to prove my story, it only would seem like the ravings of a madman. Then I noticed a metallic glitter among the sacks. Adrenaline flooding my body, my hand anxiously moved to reveal an empty tin can with lace tied to it. Burton repeatedly told me to wait a second whenever I was pumped full of adrenaline. The kitchen was still closed for the weekend. Bucatini Smanacati. They treat people well around here. Then I saw it. Majestic and creepy. 
The symbol that attracted me at the Molesberg Mansion took up a good portion of the side facing. From up close, I could determine without a doubt that it wasn't blood. After an entire night, the coloring would have assumed another shade, increasingly turning brown. Nevertheless, it properly played its role, giving me the shivers. Before walking freely around the residence, it would be a good idea to introduce myself to Mr. Molesberg. Come in! Buenos dias, senor! Do you need anything? My name is Lazarus Bundy. I'm an investigator, employed by the HPD. La policia? They say the investigations were interrupted for today. The inspector changed his mind and decided to send me. Modestly, the best agent in the department. Bendita Virgen Maria, gracias. The more people is looking for little Catherine, and more chance we have to find her. I agree, Mrs... Lupe, senor, just Lupe. I'm the housekeeper of the Molesberg Mansion. Is Mr. Molesberg home? First and foremost, uh, I need to ask him a couple of questions. No, lo siento. He left the house a few hours ago. He said he prefers to throw himself into work than staying home waiting for news without doing anything. Estoy segura he'll be back mañana. Tomorrow, I mean. I understand. In the meantime, uh, do you mind if I carry on my investigation in the mansion? No, on the contrary. Do como si fuera en your casa. That door behind you. Does it lead to the girl's room? Oh no, esa is the room of her father, el señor Mulsberg. Unfortunately, he expressly asked me not to let anybody enter. Mr. Mulsberg was in his room at the time of the kidnapping and thinks it no necessary to invade his private space. You can find the girl's room on the upper floor. Both doors are fine. Well, for once, things were going smoothly. Please stick around. I'll have some more questions soon. Please do what you can. Hello, Lupe. Do you need something? I'm interested in hearing other opinions about Catherine Molesberg. We all love her in this house. Senor Molesberg is always buried in the work while Catherine brings sunshine in these walls. Unfortunately, no obstante, she's such a happy girl. She hasn't got many friends. Your father's name is probably a deterrent for acquaintances, and above all, boyfriends. God bless you for what you are doing for her. I just know that La Señorita is still alive. Where does this confidence of yours come from? Dios would never let one of his sweetest creatures be hurt. I was going to tell her that in real life nobody is ever spared from evil. But I held my tongue. That woman was already upset enough on her own. Stick around, Lupe. I wasn't interested in the products. On the other hand, I noticed a side compartment containing some fresh white clothes from the washing machine. If I needed it, I'd go back to get it. I didn't know much about music, but that sheet music was weird. In that house, a terrible crime had just been committed. The air in the living room was thick with fear, hate, and anguish. Ah, oh, to hell with it. Maybe some good music would boost morale. Or maybe not. So that was the entrance to Catherine Molesberg's room. Hmm. Both entrances were locked. Lupe hadn't warned me about that. But within me, to my core, I knew that something like this would happen. Hello, Lupe. Do you need something? I found the doors on the upper floor locked. It's not exactly a good way to start an investigation. Oh, el señor must have locked them all because la policía has finished these investigations. Pero estoy segura que the key is on the upper floor somewhere. El problema es que I don't know exactly where. Do you mind looking for it? Nah, I'm, I'm used to these kind of situations. Thanks anyway. Stick around, Lupe.
Maybe the key was hidden up there, but it was too high for me to reach it. I thought of putting the piano stool in a useful position to reach the top of the frame. I unlocked both entrances to the room and finally prepared to start my investigation. I only needed a quick glance to realize that something inside that room wasn't as it should be. Not even a minimum sign of struggle. No item out of place. None of the typical evidence usually found at a kidnapping scene. The bed was even made. I was sure that Eric Molesberg hadn't had the room fixed up after the alleged crime. Alright, let's try to understand what happened in here. It had been a while since I'd practiced with the blue steel. That side of the house faced a small backyard, where I could see an unused shed. Directly below the window was a trash can. If the girl decided to get rid of something compromising, all she had to do was throw it in the garbage. I decided to check. Strange. The bed wasn't disturbed, and yet, Catherine had been kidnapped overnight. There were dolls everywhere in that room. Either Catherine was really tied to her past, or she was traumatized by it. It was time to act. Who are you? And above all, why did you knock down the gate? It was open! Oh, uh, are you sure? Well, anyway, I'm surprised how many people don't read the newspaper anymore. I am. Lazarus Bundy! Lars to friends, but you can call me Bundy, Mr. Pirate. I'm the detective assigned to the case of young Catherine. I'm relieved to see you here. That poor girl doesn't deserve what's happened to her. Spare me the platitudes and don't go very far. I want to question you personally. I'm not going anywhere. As if I could. They haven't given me a holiday since 95. I could have stolen those keys just to kill time, but I preferred to wait. Surely the need to do that would arise soon enough. Hello, good man. Cut the small talk and tell me everything you know about the crime. It was late at night when from my shed out back, I heard a loud crash. It gave me a shock. I rushed outside and found Mr. Mulsberg in his robe. I don't know if I was more upset by that spectacle or the sign on the facade. So you live in the vicinity. The kidnappers were reckless. You could have seen them. The mansion is really dark at night and very isolated. We're more vulnerable to these sort of crimes than you think. What do you think was the reason for the kidnapping? Excluding money, obviously. Catherine was a very joyful girl. Everybody loved her. But then she refused to leave the house for months. How come? I don't know precisely. I mind my own business. You have a very special talent. I started for fun after watching a movie. And to my great surprise, I found out I was good at it. Congratulations. This beaver came out really nice. Can't you see it's a horse? Stick around. I didn't want an egg in my coat. Come here, sweetie. I was suddenly hungry for broth. The back of the house revealed a separate floor. Clearly, the back area was reserved for the servants, and they kept it hidden from sight. If my assumptions were right, maybe I would find something useful in the middle. At first glance, I didn't see anything unusual. Then, from the filthy depths of that abyss, something emerged. As my friend Frank would say, Bingo! Literally, had I worked this hard just to recover a bingo card? 
Yet, my intuition urged me to persist with that bingo card. It was impossible to open the lock with my bare hands. I'd need the key. The door was locked, but I didn't mind. I could go inside by the main entrance. They contained grain and animal feed. I was fond of that feed. It tasted like ham. Here, Bridget. Come here, sweetie. Something in the look of that dog told me it didn't want to play. Lupe had already put the stool back in its place. If there's one thing I really hate, it's people that can't stand anything left out of place for more than five minutes. Some of those numbers reminded me of something. Those numbers had to mean something. What if they were a clue to the bingo card I found? Those numbers, what if they were... I inserted the numbers scribbled on the envelope. card was the right size to be inserted into the projector, almost as if it was specifically created for it. I inserted the numbers found in the envelope, but the beam of light only highlighted letters without a complete meaning. I was sure they were a clue, but I needed something else. A little outdated as- Was the girl fond of antiques? The drawer contained only a few sheets of paper with nothing interesting on them, and a fiberglass bowl containing some little numbers, like the ones used to play bingo. Notes, scribbles, there was no hint or clue on those pages. I didn't want to move them. They might be hiding a clue. There were a bunch of numbers, 11, 23, 8, 52, 72, 36, 61. They had to mean something. I was sure I had set the right code. The first clues to suggest it were the numbers inside the drawer. Based only on those, though, the possible combinations would be countless. I got the key to reading it from the envelope I received the morning before. The lunatic was toying with me as a cat does a mouse, and yet I couldn't help but continue going down that road. I felt like an old man hearing the final number called, the victorious one. I had done it. The peculiar angle of the holes directed the beam of light toward three specific points on the bookcase, highlighting three syllables, Baal, Sa, Mo. Balsamo, Italian for balm. Why did Catherine leave a clue in Italian? No, I was confused. All that work just served to lead me to a hygiene product? My skin smells natural, so no need to wash it. As weird as it might seem, the message hidden in the young girl's room led me to the word balsamo. It's Italian for balm. Still unsure of what I had just found, I took the product in question and looked at it more closely. Nothing. No writing, creases, or rip on the label. No tiny objects hidden in the gooey interior liquid. Just a simple damned balm. For that first day of investigation, I conceded defeat. 
I'd lost half a day risking my life on unstable makeshift ledges and in smelly sewers. I lost the other half playing bingo with the ghost of the person I was trying to find. Oh, and came away with sticky soap bubbles in my pockets. Yet, I couldn't think of anything I should have done differently. In a way, I was sure I had moved one step closer to the truth. There was going to be no ransom. The egregious Mr. Molesberg would have been waiting in vain until I found something. Lately, I hardly get any sleep. This kidnapping case was making matters worse. An extravagant girl, Catherine. The claustrophobic atmosphere of the Molesberg mansion. The twisted challenge that was thrown at me. And that mask. That mask was haunting me. That morning, I found a surprise waiting for me in the Miami Harbinger. Tucked between its pages, similar to the letter found two days before, an envelope stuck out. Inside it, a note, displaying some chess pieces, whose meaning would only become clear to me later, and a picture that immediately attracted my attention. Catherine, hand in hand with a guy I'd never seen before. I w but who sent that hint? I had to show the picture to Alice by the end of the day. I was sure she knew her stuff about online searches. The paper opened with news about a little tourist plane that had apparently escaped from the Bermuda Triangle unharmed. Normally, the Harbinger didn't deal with such cases, but in this particular situation, there were clues and disturbing details that attracted the attention of the media. From the article, it appeared that the investigator in charge was none other than the infamous Noah Adote Aduele. The man was had very little to do with him, but he always seemed very antisocial to me. Ramos was still on the run. But the experts believe it impossible that he could have left the country due to the extremely tight security checks. I hope they weren't making the same mistake as me, underestimating that guy. It showed Catherine with an athletic looking guy with gel slicked hair. Very, uh, masculine. The meaning of that little note, along with the identity of the one who delivered it to me, remained a mystery. I was not an expert on the subject, but it looked like a Winrose to me. 